Hey there, I hope you're doing good. I just finished a, the last video was a, an attempt at some peacock colors on an 8x10 canvas. It was my trial run and I wasn't super pleased with it. So I took out a color, but I have a purple and then a deeper blue and a lighter blue which has a dot of paint in it and a lighter blue. This is phthalo cyanine green. This is purple by Dollar Rowney, which is a Walmart brand. And I wanted, I, I had a hot pink and I took the hot pink out. It was called Light Magenta by Liquitex Basics. It just stood out too much and you don't really see hot pink on peacocks that much. And so I decided to add more of a limeier green. So I'm using Creative Inspirations Light Green and I'm putting some light olive green by Master's Touch into it. So it's going to be a mixture of those two greens so that I have just a little bit lighter and brighter green than I do the phthalo cyanine green, which is more of an emerald green. It's a deep green color. And then I always typically use my go-to recipe is one-to-one -one ratio with Floetrol. And I'm using Oetrol, which is the same thing as Floetrol. It's Oetrol Easy Flow from Europe and the company graciously sends me free product to demo for you and it gives people that are outside the United States an option to look for a product that's similar to Floetrol and um, it's very good quality. I actually really like it a lot. It self levels, it doesn't crack or craze, that kind of thing. So I like to strain my Floetrol or Oetrol through a mesh strainer just to get out any possible fluggers and you just have less chances of your paint having lumps and bumps in it. So I'm just kind of help pushing that through this wire mesh. So I've got like a, a one to one ratio there. I'm going to speed through the mixing part. It's going to be mixed up and you're going to see me with a red bottle here which is water, 90% water, 10% Oetrol or Floetrol. So it kind of comes out like a milky water consistency and that's what it is. It's just water with some Floetrol added to it and I will be back in a minute. Okay. And I don't know if I mentioned the colors that are in the bigger cups and the um, yeah, the, the purple and the two blues are by Fine Touch, which is a brand that comes from Hobby Lobby, and they're 16 ounce tub bottles of paint where they have a flat black lid. They're um, usually about $6.99, and so those are those colors. Like I said, the Thalo Cyanin Green was Liquitex Basics. The, what they call purple, but it's really more of a violet color, is a violet fuchsia is Dollar Rowney from Walmart and again this one is Creative Inspirations which is from Jerry's Artorama. Light green with light olive green from Master's Touch which is a Hobby Lobby paint. So when you get that consistency that where it pours off your stick and it lands on top of the other paint and kind of sinks into it pretty quickly then you're pretty much right at the right consistency you need to be at. The other thing I want to do is add OGX Coconut Milk, which is an anti-breakage hair serum. If you find other OGX products, the key ingredient that you're looking for is dimethicone. That will be the first one or two ingredients, and that's what you're looking for. If your product has that in it, then you're okay. But it needs to be a clear product, 
It doesn't need to be white or anything like that. And it needs to have dimethicone as a key ingredient. So I just put a big drop in for this whole cup of paint. I actually, I have used silicone here in the last videos for a while and I love it. OGX leaves a little less residue when the painting is dry. That's, that's the one perk that I can say about OGX. Besides, usually I like to get the really big cells from OGX is the fact that the residue is not as greasy because you're only using a drop or so. You're not, you're using, a, you're not using a pump because when you pump, it'll give you about a teaspoon to a tablespoon of product in your hand for your hair. You don't need that for a cup of paint. You just need a nice drop of paint, I mean of OGX. And with silicone, I do a drop of silicone per ounce of paint mixture. So if I have an eight ounce cup of paint, I'm gonna add eight drops of silicone to it. So when it dries, it does have a little bit more of an oily residue. So that's the one thing I wanted to note. This is a 14 by 14 inch canvas. And I am going to do a dirty pour aiming to do it in a beautiful peacock color fashion. So that's what I'm aiming for. I also have some white uh, Artist Loft Flow Acrylic in a cup. It's mixed one to one as well with no silicone. It does have water in it. So a 14 by 14 inch canvas probably needs six, seven, eight ounces of paint tops. So I'm just gonna use one of my <coughs> cups this size. And some people like to put a drop of silicone or whatever. I'm going to just do one drop in here. And I'm going to take my fingers and just spread it around the cup just for the fun of it. <coughs> It just makes the cup a little slicker inside. Some people spray like a uh, blaster into it or like WD-40. I really I don't care to use those kind of sprays because I don't want it floating around in the air and breathing it. So I stick to silicone and OGX because they're in liquid form and there's not a bunch of fumes and stuff going up into the air. So I'm just putting that in to maybe help it not stick to the cup as much. We'll just see. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of white. And I think I want to go with a little bit of this phthalo cyanin green. And I'm going to do the, the brighter green right kind of next to it. Then I'll do this blue, the more vivid, lighter blue. I'm going to throw in just a little, I'm going to just trickle a little bit of white to just kind of separate the color out just a little bit. And then I'm going to do this next deeper blue. Then I'm going to put this violet color that's called purple, but it's more of a lighter magenta violet. And then I'm going to put the deep purple. Let me put a little bit of white again. I'm just uh, trickling a little bit. So a little bit of this deep purple. And maybe I'll top off this lighter blue at the top just to see. So I've got a full cup of paint. Got push pins on the bottom. And I'm going to add some white around the edge of the cup. I've got more white paint, but that's what's in my smaller cup. And in order just to make sure that this paint releases from the cup totally and kind of allows it to flow, I'm going to release the air pressure. And you just do that by punching holes and see how the cup kind of lifts up like a volcano on its own. Then 
This smells, this feels more like the peacock colors compared to the last one which had the hot pink in it. So we'll see what transpires from this. But I'm loving the colors and I am not going to heat it with a heat torch because Oftentimes, when I do use the heat gun like last time, it pulls up a lot of little tiny white dots. And I would rather the cells grow naturally on their own. So I'm going to just allow the canvas to sit here for a few minutes. So pretty inside. If you see any obvious bubbles, you can just blow on it with your breath and that will usually pop the bubbles. I saw one right there. But I don't want a lot of white dots speckled on top of my colors, so I'm not going to use the heat. I'm just going to be patient and let it sit for a few minutes. I think I have a lump there, but I'm not sure, so I'm just going to let it sit still. But um. I'm just very slowly just moving it a little bit and as you stretch it it's bringing out its own little cells just as you stretch it very slightly because those air bubbles are popping and releasing. With colors that you're using that are all kind of in the same value, like these are all kind of jewel tones except for that lighter green and the, the brighter purple, which they call purple, but it's really more of a violet, a pinky violet color. Because they're all so close in the value of color, you're not going to get a lot of contrast. So that is actually why I added the white to try to, you know, make some of that color really pop out. I don't want the white to take over, but I kind of want it layered in between a little bit. And I probably could have added a little more white between the layers, to be honest. So I'm just very slowly tilting, trying to shift some of the weight of the paint back to the center before I go back to the other corner again. It's kind of like you want the white between the colors, but you don't really want the white to show that much. That's the funny part. I do have a lump because I see it moving with the paint, but it's not an obvious lump where it just lifts right out, but I don't want to blend my colors right there, so I may have to drop uh, some color on that spot. Maybe I'll drop a little um, lime green. And then as I stretch it, it will move around. So I'm going to take some of this that's dripped off from this canvas and the previous pour and just stick it in this corner to get it wet. These beautiful, deep, rich, vivid, jewel tone colors. 
so now that when I tilt it a little bit it'll go just a little faster over that corner. Now I'm going to bring it back to the center. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just to put some paint on that corner. Let that paint flow kind of quickly. And come back. Now I have this corner to cover. So I'll just get it a little wet. You have to move quickly though when you're stretching so you don't want to totally stretch out everything. So now I can come back and now if I want to adjust it any So I love the huge cells and I don't really want to mess with that. I do kind of miss the fact that there's not a lot of purple in this area because I you know put purple in between the layers but it you know because I layered it up the purple didn't have a chance to to be layered again on this end with the greens. So I may just take I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take some of this magenta purple and the deeper purple maybe a hint of the blue I'm just going to drag the stick. So that that what happens is that is swiping and so it pulls out those cells which are lovely. So I'm trying to hide some of that white. I don't want the white to be quite so strong. Now maybe I'll stretch it down this way a little bit. That's kind of pretty. So Trying to decide if I want to put anything here where it's really super dark. So if I did, it would be the phthalo green, a little white, which let's see if I can get a little white. I'll go with, and I'm going to go with the deeper blue too. Take my skewer, swish it a few. Uh, put a little bit of that lighter green too. So I'm just trying to roll it around so it's not in clumps of color.
I'm just allowing it to stretch some. I'm going to take my skewer. And drag over that deeper purple a little bit with this color. Just to give it a little bit of a funkier design. So the green kind of is in your face, but I still like it. I love I love the big cells. I like the patterns. Those white little tiny dots popped in anyway, even though I didn't use my heat gun. So sometimes it does that, but I'm not displeased with it. I think I'm done. I think I'm going to do one more really quick, 8 by 10 and because I have these pretty jewel tones here and that are dripping on the canvas or the puppy pad that's on top of a plastic tray, I'm going to just throw in a few dots of this violet color. some of this lighter green. And I'll do the vivid blue, the really deeper one. And there's a good amount of purple already on the table, so I'm not going to really add purple. I just want some puddles of vibrant color. And I'm going to use my squeeze bottle that has white in it because I don't have any white left in my cup and just do a dash here and there. And I'm going to take my canvas and just turn it upside down and press in. Now I didn't think I had the whole canvas pressed in, so what I can do is take my palette knife, take some of that color, so I'm basically just adding some paint on the bottom of the canvas where it didn't get the, the color dipped. So kind of close to the colors that were in that area. And let's do some white. And I'm going to let it stretch down a little bit. I can even drag my finger down to give it kind of that dipped effect. Clean it off. And that will help kind of with that look too. So it's okay. It's not uh, my favorite by any means. You can also, if you don't like something, I always say play with it more. So I could take some of this uh, phthalo cyanine green, 
drag it over that lime if I want to just add in another color. Maybe a little bit over the white area. Then here it's kind of bland up here, so maybe I will do a little blue. Wipe back off. Make sure I have a clean palette knife. See if I can get some white. I can also put white on my palette knife with my squeeze bottle. In the area where it's a little drab, just kind of drag it. So you just kind of add your color in where you want it kind of get rid of the boring areas or that you know don't have a lot of color to them but anyway and then you can stretch it you know kind of back and forth I'm just taking the color and Moving it over the edge with my finger. You see an area where the canvas is showing, you can always put a little paint on your finger and just put it back on the canvas. So it's all covered now and there it is. Nothing fantastic, but this is how you do a dip, kind of. You can also just put puddles of color on your canvas, put another canvas on top of it like a sandwich, and then press and release, and you'll get the same kind of effect depending on how you put the colors down on the canvas that's on the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out all the links below the video and click on the notification bell if you're a subscriber. You'll get notified every time I upload a video. There's PayPal and Patreon if you would like to donate anything. It's quite uh, expensive to do this and of course I love doing it and I'll always do it so any donation is appreciated. And there is my Facebook group. If you want to come join my Facebook group, you can connect with me there on a better level, uh, more personal. You can upload pictures there to the Facebook group and, you know, get comments on them. You can add comments to other people's photos and learn so many things from some really fantastic artists in the group. There's over 7,000 people in that group and you don't have to post anything. You can just look at the people's posts if you want to. But there's great files and uh, charts and tips on so many different things. So go check it out if you want to. Find me on Instagram and follow me there too. I would love to have you follow me everywhere. Check out my website, sandralette.com. There's products in my art store that you can purchase and mostly every painting I ever do is usually for sale there. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.
So I just finished editing my video and posted the picture at the end of the video and I had already named the painting but I had it turned in a different way but this was the way I was painting it and I saw this after I let the painting dry after I edited the video and looking at the final photograph this is a silhouette of me. I see my bangs, my nose on the right, my lips, my chin, and my shoulder. And on the left, my hair is kind of coming down where the, uh, the swipe was that I had done, where it kind of brought out some turquoise and the hot pink over on the left-hand side. That there is my hair. So here's my forehead my nose, I have a pug nose, my lips, I have a downturned mouth, my chin, and my shoulder. And I had already named the painting Awakening. This just is another way that the Spirit speaks through me and it's just amazing that things are revealed after the fact. This is always constant in my life. But I had to share this with you. I really had to share this. So I just wanted you to see how we can do a pour and see absolutely really nothing until it dries and then something is revealed to us afterwards. So I just wanted to share that with you.